Look, I've created my handiest ever watercolor travel kit. Despite its small size, it has absolutely everything I need for painting on the go in this tiny kit. As you can see, I have not only paints, but also a watercolor pencil and an eraser for underdrawings, and even a tiny sketchbook of my favorite watercolor paper, which I made fast and easy. Let me know if you want to see how I made it. I use this palette more than any other everywhere for plain air sketching and for painting at home. In this video, I will show you how I made different attachment options for this tin to make it more convenient to use in any situation. And also I want to share my thought process on choosing colors for this limited palette of 8 pans. If you have seen my previous video, then you already know why I chose particularly these three primaries for my set. If you haven't seen it yet, I guess I can recommend it, so it will pop up at the end of this video. I don't want to repeat myself now. So, long story short, these three paints, which are sun yellow and bright blue ink tents from Jovent and rose watercolor from Van Gogh, already give me a more versatile color range than most of the ready-made watercolor sets that I have come across. From my perspective, the brands of paints are not very important. My best watercolor portraits so far were made using no-name cheap watercolors. What matters more to me are the selection of the pigments and the quality of the watercolor paper. Just for an example, I am showing a color chart of a student-grade watercolor brand. These little boxes indicate the level of paint opacity. To achieve the full benefits of watercolor, I recommend searching for transparent paints with the empty square symbol, while the colored in square stands for opaqueness. These types of watercolors are way closer to gouache. As you could notice, my paints are semi-transparent. For instance, I use this rose paint with a diagonal line. This works well for my urban sketching style, as I can still see the ink line when I make ink and wash, while having the ability to add yellow on top of other colors and see yellow, not a yellowish version of the bottom layer color. If I were to create a limited palette of three perfect transparent watercolors from this list, I would choose this color for magenta, these for yellow, and maybe these for cyan. On the other hand, if we don't mind sacrificing a bit of pocket space and a certain amount of money, we could consider buying a few extra colors to make mixing easier and faster. I will use a tin that has space for 8 half pans. But which colors should I choose? Many artists prefer a split primary color palette, which I guess is a classical way to achieve any color. However, I strongly believe that the universal perfect palette does not exist, and each artist chooses the set of colors that is most convenient for them. In turn, I wanted to create the perfect gamma for my particular needs. And here is my formula for paint selection. First of all, add colors that make your color wheel full of saturated versions of each human visible color, in order to have the ability to mix all hues at their maximum chroma. Secondly, add colors that you use very often and that are mixed from more than two colors, which means three. And if after the first two steps there is still free space for extra pans, consider the most used colors even if they can be achieved from the two already available colors. 
Also, this time I will follow one additional limitation, which is to add paints to my primaries only from one small set to show that it isn't necessary to buy a lot of paints. You can work with those you have. I will use the Inktense Paint Pen Travel Set number 1 from Dovent because I already have it. I talked about its pros and cons in my previous video, so I won't go over them again. I will share their names, as I was asked, but feel free to pay attention to hues only. For the first step, let's start by analyzing the color wheel achieved by mixing my three primaries. The reds seem imperfect to me. This puppy red is supposed to make this sector of reds and oranges more vibrant. The same story with greens. And I'm adding teal green, which looks like this, to help vivid greens join the party. Let's see how these two colors complete my chroma wheel of all hues. As you can see, I don't need this mango color as it's easily mixed from puppy red and sunny yellow. By mixing teal green with yellow, I can achieve all greens I want. I will not need kiwi anymore. And it also makes my greenish-blue mixtures of sky and sea tones great as well. And now I am ready to move on to the second step of my formula. For one, I need to add ink black as it will make mixing all different hues of dark dual shades faster. Of course, it's possible to mix any muddy or light natural color using only the three primary colors. However, to make life easier and speed up the color mixing process, I prefer to add commonly used sketching colors to my palette. With room for only two half pans in my travel kit, I have to be selective with my color choices. So I really have to think about which colors I use the most and whether I can mix them up from just two I've already selected. I use burnt yellow ochre frequently to create everything from skin tones to wooden furniture colors. It can be blended from yellow, red and a tiny drop of green or blue. Natural brown is my go-to shade for the same items as well as for hair and landscapes. As you can see, it takes a tag longer to mix than my yellow ochre. I don't use dark plum quite as often and it's easily created with a mix of bright blue and puppy red. So, I do wonder why this set only includes this dull representative of all violets, purples and pinks out there. Well, let's move on. It's a lost cause. And raised green is on stage. A color I frequently use in landscapes and urban sketching. It turns out that it can be made in seconds by combining teal green with ink black. And after this short investigation, the final choice of colors for my individual daily sketching and travel palette becomes clear and unequivocal. Sun yellow, puppy red, rose, bright blue, burn yellow ochre, natural brown, ink black and teal green. My final color wheel has absolutely all the hues I need thanks to just these five colors. And before we move on to my attachment methods, I wanted to mention that if you are already enjoying this video, I'd love to know about it. Your likes and comments have a special place in my heart. And now let's dive into some fun ideas I came up with for attaching my kit. The first one is perfect if I paint in a sketchbook. I can secure my kit directly to the sheet of the pad with neodymium magnets. First, I checked which side of each magnet 
holds my magnet paint pens better and marked the same pole of each neodymium magnet with white acrylic paint. The point is that any magnet will attract the iron box, no matter which side it is leaned against. But we should choose the same orientation for neodymium magnets and those on the bottom of paint pans to hold them even better. Ok, this works perfectly. But how can I hold my palette if I work on some kind of easel? I got an idea from a video of Sarah Burns, who is a great art blogger. She uses a drawing board clip to hold her plastic palette. I told my friends about ordering this holder. And they said, what? Why do you want to buy this little hook somewhere on the internet and wait for it if it is easy breezy to make it? And guess what? Okay. And here it is. My DIY holder. Isn't it perfect? Hm, at least it's perfect to me. Let's attach the clip to the box with this 3M dual lock. Wait, I think I have an even better idea. Let me check. Mm -hmm. Yep, I don't need it since my palette is in a tin container. Cool, now I can clip this holder to any surface I am painting on, or just put it on my finger and attach my art kit to it. And I can use this holder with any other magnetic palette. Here is the video of my tiniest palette. It is like a prequel to this video, where I show how I attached magnets to paint pens and how I painted human skin with only three primers for the first time in my life. Thank you so much for watching until the end. Have a wonderful day and stay happy!